Greetings, this is Paul the Poke from paulthepoke.com. Today's topic, trend update, temple, stone, altar, May 2016. Uh, scripture references are Exodus 20, verses 25, or verse 25. If you make an altar of stone for me, you shall not build it of cut stones. For if you wield your tool on it, you will profane it. Deuteronomy 27, verse 5, Moreover, you shall build there an altar to the Lord your God, an altar of stones. You shall not wield an iron tool on them. And so, so what's the big deal with iron? Well, rock, made by God. Iron, that's when man starts to fashion the stone, interrupt God's work. So, and then also figuratively, who is known as the rock in the Bible? Well, that would be Jesus. So the sacrifice on the rock. Jesus. Uh, these are the directions given to Moses by God. So, you know, fast forward to the 21st century, and these directions are being followed again. In fact, they have been followed again. The Temple Institute has recently announced the completion of a stone altar for the sacrificial service. The Mosaic Law has been followed accordingly, and uh, stones from the remote shores of the Dead Sea were gathered from this location. And the reason is they wanted to make sure that none of these stones had been touched by iron. So they went to the most remote place they could find in Israel to gather these stones. And they haven't been touched by any iron equipment, cut or quarried. So they're trying to find stones as best as they can tell have not been touched by man. Uh, the stones were wrapped in plastic to protect them from being touched by iron, and workers completed their labor in bare feet to make sure that they didn't have any anything that was crafted potentially by iron touch the stones. So the completed altar is versatile. It can be assembled and reassembled easily. It comes in multiple pieces. It's on display at the Temple Institute. And uh, when the time comes, the altar can be moved to the reconstructed temple. And for references, check out templeinstitute.org, keywords build an altar. Uh, Mobile.wnd.com has some uh, pictures of it. Breakingisraelnews.com has some pictures and an altar story as well. I think I'm going to provide a link if anybody's interested in the Temple Institute. Uh, now this is where it gets kind of fun when you go back in the history of the altar. And, the, and some directions were found in Joshua, Joshua 8 verses 31. Just as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded the sons of Israel, as it is written in the book of the law of Moses, an altar of uncut stones on which no man had wielded an iron tool, and they offered burnt offerings on it to the Lord and sacrificed peace offerings. That's in the book of Joshua. Joshua. Just file that away. In the king or in the days of King Solomon, the law was followed, and the altar was built accordingly. First Kings six, verse seven, the house while it was being built, was built of stone prepared at the quarry, and there was neither hammer nor axe nor any iron tool heard in the house while it was being built. And um, when the Israelites returned to Jerusalem after their exile from King Cyrus of Persia, they built an altar. The construction of the altar was led by a high priest named Yeshua. Happens to be the Hebrew name for Jesus. Um, and he's our high priest. So, a high priest named Yeshua built an altar. Ezra 3 verse 2, Then Yeshua, the son of Josadak and his brothers, the priests, and Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, and his brothers arose and built the altar of God, of Israel, to offer burnt offerings on it, as it is written in the Law of Moses, the man of God. Um, and then this is what is, is pretty interesting in light of our times, considering they're building a temple, or I'm sorry, not building a temple, but building an altar for the temple now. Ezra 3, verse 6, 
From the first day of the seventh month, they began to offer burnt offerings to the Lord, but the foundation of the temple of the Lord had not been laid. So there was no temple. So there is precedence for sacrifices to start without a temple, and that's in Ezra 3. Um, and then also the timing of that's kind of kind of interesting. The seventh month on a Hebrew calendar is Tishri, and the first day would be the beginning of the civic new year. So we know that day is Rosh Hashanah, or the Feast of Trumpets, or Yom Teruah. And this year, 2016, on a Gregorian calendar, that holiday is October 2, 2016. So, you know, it wouldn't be out of line for them to begin their sacrifices on the first of the fall feasts on Yom Teruah, Feast of Trumpets, Rosh Hashanah on what would be the first day of their seventh month. So there has been precedent set for it. So keep your eye on Israel and any, any temple talk. They're putting stuff together. They're ready to go. If you're interested in topics related to the temple, check out paulthepoke.com, keyword temple, altar. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye.